First ever trip to the Valero Alamo Bowl for the University of Utah. Last time Utah had a big outing in San Antonio was a pretty big deal. It was 21 years ago. Many Ute fans descended on the Riverwalk for a little event called the Final Four. And we're well represented there, coming up just short against Kentucky. I'm not quite sure there'll be quite as many this year, but there should be a good crowd down there nonetheless. And uh, Derek Fox, who's the uh, uh, CEO and president of the San Antonio Bowl Association, heading up the Valero Alamo Bowl, kind enough to join us here. Derek, how are you? Bill, doing great. How are you? Doing fantastic. So uh, what's changed in 21 years since the last time Utah was on the Riverwalk? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's only gotten bigger and better down here in San Antonio. So, And actually, we just had about a $60 million renovation in the Dome last year that was completed for the, the most current Final Four. So those fans who came down uh, will certainly notice a, an improved facility. And obviously, it's always great to spend the, the river, time on the Riverwalk. So when, when did you know Utah was going to be your team? Obviously, there's all the behind-the-scenes stuff, and there's wheeling and dealing. There were certainly bowls of Above you that the, the New Year's Day sixes that had some options. So when, when were you pretty sure Utah was going to be your team, Derek? Uh, as soon as we saw the top 25 poll be announced and, and uh, at 2 o'clock and, and uh, to see that, uh, unfortunately for Utah's perspective, they weren't in the New Year's Six games and obviously were available to us. So we were glad to have them and be our selection uh, as the Pac-12 representative this year. So obviously very excited to have the Utes. They've had a great year and I look forward to having them down here and had an advanced team in a couple days ago and you know, great to work with those people as well in advance. So you, you obviously keep your eye on all the Pac-12 schools because you've got the deal with the Pac-12 schools. You knew that Utah was probably in the mix this year. Oregon was in the mix. USC was in the mix for a little while as well so how, how does that kind of work for you you're just kind of bouncing around from stadium to stadium wearing one of those crazy blazers and talking <laughs> to all the administrators uh, absolutely, and really just trying to go and, and uh, listen to the fan bases, too. It's certainly we could sit at home and, and see the style of play and, and how the teams play and the players and, and those type of things, but really trying to get a sense from the fans as to how excited they were they are about that specific team and that specific year, and then ultimately, are they going to travel to Bull Destination X? So I think we had a chance to see uh, Utah several times throughout the course of the year. Obviously, they're selling out at home, which is always a good indication of fan support, uh, and to have, a you know especially a senior class like this, has done so much for the program i think you'll see a lot of people who will follow uh to, to send this class out in style and then obviously texas is there too and that's 80 miles from where you guys sit in austin they haven't had quite the year they thought they were going to have in in probably august and september but you know do you i mean you figure there's a lot of texas fans that live in san antonio austin isn't that far away do you anticipate a good crowd from texas coming too uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have a good crowd from, from both sides. Obviously, yeah, Texas has a geographic advantage being right up the road, uh, but obviously we've had a very good run of uh, you know very competitive games in the Valero Alamo Bowl and the, and the fans traveling from the schools uh, coming down here to spend the, the New Year's in San Antonio. So it's, it's worked very well. So we've been very fortunate and had and very competitive games. So it's been working on all cylinders from that perspective, so we hope to have another great game this upcoming December 31st. Derek Fox with us here on the Bill Riley Show, president and CEO of the Valero Alamo Bowl, where the Utes will be heading in just a few weeks. Uh, how have you seen, you know, kind of the interest in a bowl like yours and others change since the playoffs were instituted four or five years ago, Derek? Well, we've been fortunate, and we've got the first pick in the two conferences you referenced before, the Big 12 and Pac-12, after the CFP. So we're, we've gotten teams that are very successful, had very successful seasons, and typically fans have, have traveled well in the competitive games. TV sets have been tuned on. But there's no doubt there's obviously been an impact in the with the CFP and the, specifically the focus of who's in, right? So the focus is on those four, and it's almost, you know, even if you're in the New Year's Six, there's still a line of delineation between it being a New Year's Six Bowl or being in the semifinal game. So there definitely has been some impact, but that's where it's important for us and bowls like us to make sure you've got great local support year in and year out, regardless of the teams that are here. And then obviously you want to make sure you have the very best experience for those teams that are in their game in each specific year. When or if it does expand, would would you look at something like, would you expect to see them utilize more of the current bowls, or would you think they would go with the on-campus model if they end up going to eight, do you think, Derek? Great question, and, and that's been debated a lot, and I think those will continue to be debated. You know, to see what kind of expansion. You know, a first, will it expand, um, and then b in which format. And you can certainly argue that doing it within the bowl system makes a great sense from that perspective. But obviously, if you are going to expand, you know, at what cost? Does that mean you're going to move towards an on-campus environment, uh, or are you going to do away with conference championship games? So, where is the give and take in the postseason model uh, going forward? And that'll be an interesting discussion we'll all have over the next few years. I'm 
sure. Hey, Derek, give our listeners that haven't been to San Antonio, I've talked to a bunch of Utah fans that are going to be making their trek down there that you know, booked their hotel reservations. Give them an idea of what the layout is, where the Alamo Bowl is compared to downtown, the river walks, some things like that, restaurants, some areas they'll want to hit down there and things like that. Absolutely. You're the, the Alamo Dome's right in the heart of downtown. So basically you're going to walk literally just um, from your hotel if you're staying at downtown San Antonio on the Riverwalk, walk over to the to uh, our, the dome itself. Matter of fact, the teams stay so close that they can literally walk from their hotel to the stadium. We've had a few teams do that, which is kind of cool. And that puts them things into perspective as to the downtown compact footprint that we're in. Uh, and then you have a chance to you know enjoy not only the events that we're doing, but obviously you can go to, you know, bring your golf clubs if you want to golf. The weather will be nice nice enough to do that. Uh, you got the Riverwalk. Uh, you got a chance to have a lot of shopping, a lot of great food and dining uh, establishments uh, throughout the city as well. So people will have a good time, and we like to joke that it's going to be 72 at kickoff because we are in a dome stadium, but sometimes it's even 72 plus outside. So uh, that, that would be my question. I'm not going to ask you to give me the forecast because guys <laughs> that are paid a lot of money to do that can't even do it three days out. But in general, give our listeners a temperature range and, and how they might be able to pack. Yeah, you're probably talking about highs in the 60s and lows in the 30s, you know, ranges. Who knows what the highs and lows will be that specific bowl week, but that's kind of a general sense of what's going on. It's generally fairly dry uh, at that time of the year as well. So it's safe to say it should be pretty good weather, um, and I'll go to the limb. It might be warmer than Salt Lake City. How about that? Well, yeah, that's probably a good bet. And I guarantee it'll be drier than the Holiday Bowl was. Like the only day of the year it rains in San Diego was the day of the Holiday Bowl last year, so a lot of Utah fans got soaked. The one thing we can guarantee, it may rain out, outside but they won't be wet inside correct absolutely we've got a dome stadium and we take that for granted because we literally have our offices here but you'll be amazed at how many times we talk to players not only now but who have played here in the past that come back and say wow that was the only time i played in a, in a dome stadium in my whole college career so what we take for granted is really exciting opportunity for the student athletes and really from the fans perspective too so if you get a you know a full house this place gets very loud which is fun i'm sure you've got a website or someplace you can direct our listeners where should they go alamobull.com then you can go on there and look and see we've got everything from our fan guide which will give you some ideas of where to go as far as to uh, enjoy the amenities of san antonio uh those people haven't purchased tickets they can obviously go back through utah and get their tickets there uh and obviously we look forward to having a whole lot of youths uh, headed to san antonio and, and there may be a lot of jazz fans mixed in there too derek so you just That's- let the spur fans know to be nice while we're down there well, and, and oh, by the way, there's a gentleman named Jakob Pertl who plays for the Spurs, so maybe they can adopt him too. Jakob Pertl and my good friend Phil Cullen, who was an assistant coach, he's now on uh, pop staff down there too. Absolutely. There we go. Hey, thanks for coming on today, Derek. We'll catch up with you again. I look forward to seeing you when we get down there. Bill, thanks, thanks for having us on, and congratulations to Coach and the team for having a great year. There you go. 